In the frozen, thin air, 25,000 feet above Nazi Germany, a German Luftwaffe pilot in a Focke-Wulf 190 stared through his gun sight in utter disbelief. He had just emptied his 20mm cannons into a Boeing B-17 flying fortress. The American bomber's left wing was a jagged mess of shredded aluminum. Two of its four engines were dead, trailing thick black smoke. The tail section was hanging by a literal wire. By every law of physics and aviation, that plane should have disintegrated. Yet it wasn't falling. It was still flying level. Its 13 machine guns were still screaming back at him. The German pilots had a nickname for it. Fliegendes Stockelschwein, the flying porcupine. But more often they simply called it the aircraft that wouldn't die. Before we continue, let me ask you this. If a machine could feel fear, would the B-17 ever have known it? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if stories like this fascinate you, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss what comes next. Today, we aren't just looking at a bomber. We are looking at a masterclass in biological engineering applied to a machine. We are exploring the impossible resilience of the B-17 Flying Fortress, a plane that was designed to be murdered and still come home. In the 1930s, the world believed in a doctrine called the bomber will always get through. The idea was that a bomber could be so fast and so high that no one could catch it. But the B-17 was different. Boeing didn't build it to be fast. They built it to be a tank with wings. When a Seattle reporter first saw the prototype bristling with machine guns in 1935, he called it a flying fortress. He didn't know how prophetic that name would be. The B-17 was a response to a terrifying reality. The U.S. Army Air Corps knew that to win the war, they had to fly in broad daylight directly into the teeth of the German Luftwaffe. It was a suicide mission by design. But the B-17 had a secret weapon that wasn't a gun or a bomb. It was its redundancy. Most aircraft are designed like a chain. If one link breaks, the whole thing fails. The B-17 was designed like a nervous system. Boeing engineer Edward Wells realized that in a war of attrition, you don't build a plane that can't be hit. You build a plane that doesn't care if it's hit. The heart of this beast was the Wright R1820 Cyclone. These weren't just engines. They were masterpieces of air-cooled reliability. Unlike the liquid-cooled engines of the P-51 or the German BF-109, which would seize up if a single coolant line was nicked, the Cyclone could take a 20mm shell directly to a cylinder and keep turning. But the air at 25,000 feet is a graveyard for engines. It's too thin to breathe. To solve this, the B-17 utilized a massive turbo supercharger system. This allowed the fortress to breathe in the stratosphere, maintaining its power while German interceptors struggled to climb to its altitude. This engineering gave the B-17 its high ground, the ability to rain destruction from a place where the air itself was a weapon. If you were a German pilot, attacking a B-17 was like trying to punch a beehive while being stung from every direction. By the time the B-17G variant arrived, it carried 13.50 caliber M2 Browning machine guns. But the outlier strategy wasn't just the guns, it was the combat box formation. The Americans didn't fly in random groups, they flew in a mathematically optimized box. This turned 36 bombers into a single, massive entity, with over 400 machine guns covering every possible angle. There were no blind spots. If a German fighter attacked from the front, he faced the chin turret. If he dived from above, the top turret shredded him. If he tried to hide underneath, the ball turret, the most terrifying seat in the war, was waiting. This wasn't just defensive fire, it was psychological warfare. It forced German pilots to make high-speed, head-on passes, a game of chicken where the American bomber crew almost always had the nerves of steel. Inside the nose of the fortress sat a device that cost more than the Manhattan Project at the time, the Norden bombsite. This was the 1940s version of a supercomputer. It was so classified that bombardiers were issued a pistol and told to shoot the device or themselves before letting it fall into Nazi hands. It could account for wind, speed, and altitude to put a bomb in a pickle barrel from five miles up. This was the B-17's true purpose. All those guns, all that armor, 
and those four massive engines existed for one single reason. To carry this mechanical brain to a target and hold it steady for 30 seconds of the bomb run. The statistics tell us that 60 B-17s were lost in a single day during the Schweinfurt raid. But the statistics don't tell us about the All-American. In 1943, a German fighter collided with a B-17 named All-American, nearly slicing the entire tail section off. The fuselage was held together by a few shreds of metal and a single control cable. Any other plane would have folded in half. The crew stayed at their posts, the pilot kept it level, and they flew 90 minutes back to base and landed. Then there was the B-17 that returned with its nose completely blown off, the bombardier gone, the cockpit open to the minus 50 degree wind, and it still landed. These weren't just lucky breaks. This was the result of a fail-safe structural philosophy. The B-17 used a bridge truss construction. Even if 50% of the airframe was gone, the remaining 50% was strong enough to carry the load. By 1945, over 12,000 flying fortresses had been built. They dropped 640,000 tons of bombs, more than any other aircraft in history. But its greatest legacy wasn't the destruction it caused. It was the lives it saved. The B-17 taught the aviation world that resilience is a capability. It paved the way for modern, redundant systems in commercial airliners. Every time you fly today on a plane that can land with one engine out, you are flying on the DNA of the Flying Fortress. The B-17 was more than a bomber. It was a symbol of an era where engineering was a matter of survival. It was a machine that refused to accept defeat, flown by boys who refused to give up. German pilots called it the aircraft that wouldn't die. And in the archives of history, it never will. If you're inspired by the impossible engineering of the B-17, hit that like button. It helps us bring these forgotten miracles to a wider audience. Subscribe and turn on notifications to join our community of history and engineering fans.